Go anywhere. Here we go, please. Ready? Yeah. Hey, uh, just to piggyback on what Coach just said, Sharon and Forrest and I first met in 1993 when I came up on my recruiting trip, and which probably dates, uh, it was 24, 25 years ago. Anyone over 21? Okay, a couple guys. The rest of you weren't even a thought at that point. Uh, but, I mean, brothers for life. And before I get started, I want to invite you guys to the brotherhood. Not that it, it really exists, but I'd love to invite you guys to that because it, it does exist in our nucleus and I'd love to see it grow. Because my journey from 21 years ago when I last sat in this seat in room 10, the facilities did not look like this though, it was a lot darker and different. Uh, kudos to, to the staff and, and pumping it up and making it look good. But 21 years ago, sitting in this seat for the last time, moving on to the next stage of my life, which, guys, I didn't have a plan B. There was plan A, and plan A was my dream that I, that I wanted to achieve in my life. And that dream happened two weeks after I graduated from Lewis and Clark. Two weeks after I graduated, I was on a plane to follow my dream. How, how many of you guys got some dreams that, that you want to achieve? Yeah, of course, of course. So let, let me set a little groundwork for the next half hour here. Guys, this is a judgment-free zone. You guys know what I mean by that? judgment-free zone because my journey is not yours and the, and the path that I took may not be the one that you would have taken and vice versa so as we talk about here and, and I just I invite this to be a judgment-free zone in fact I invite you to be in a judgment-free experience in all elements of your life because you know how many people especially athletes that I talk to whose dreams have been squashed they in fact they have been pursued their dream at all for fear of judgment of what other people are going to say about them and their dreams. That someone's going to kick dirt on them. Or troll them on social media or some, some craziness. So the dreams don't even get started for fear so, of judgment. So guys, let's, let's, let's squash that, right? Let's support one another, the love, the brotherhood that we're talking. I want each one of you to go out there and be successful in the next step of your life. And some of you, it's after this year, and it sounds like about 26, 27 of you, you got three or four more years to get going here. So we got, we got a young group, we got a lot of planning, and believe me, when I was in your seat, I wasn't thinking about retirement as an athlete. How many of you guys played more than 10 years of sports in your life, organized sports? Pretty much everybody. See, 10 years of season after season after season, preparing for the next season. This day and age, right, it, sports are, are, are very much, we play in the fall, but we're preparing all spring and summer for the fall. So season after season, all of a sudden, season's gone. There is no next season. And then what do you do? See, as, as people who have dedicated for you guys, over half your life has been committed to a sport, to your athleticism, to your body, to preparation, to your skills, to preparing your mind, your body, physically, and it's gone. And what I want to exp it, it kind of convey to you guys, my goal here today, is that that transition isn't taken lightly by any athletes. You're gonna be up once your career is done here, or at wherever your career ends, whenever it ends. When it does end, guys, you're gonna be up against some pretty big obstacles. And the sooner you can start to address them, the better off you're gonna be and the, the more success you're gonna have that I did when my career ended. So I'm trying to help you shortcut them. See, things such as loss of identity, how many of you consider yourself an athlete? You're not an athlete. None of you are an athlete. You are yourself. You are you. I'm Cletus Coffee. I just happen to play sports. I just happen to be an athlete. See, you guys are not alone. Every time I ask that question, every hand goes up. But once you're done competing as an athlete, you're probably going to be like me. I still consider myself an athlete. And I rolled out into the world, and no one wanted an athlete. See, they want an engineer, a salesperson, an attorney, a policeman. <laughs> there was no room for me. I had been working for over a third of my life to prepare my mind, my body, my skills, and none of it mattered once I walked out of, out of uh, my, my final career, uh, the end of my career. So you are you, and I want you to remember that. And the sooner you can remember that, the faster 
the, the trolls and the judgment and the people that aren't on board with your plans and your dreams aren't going to matter. So you got to associate with you being you. You're not an athlete. You are you. Your unique self. Right? You just happen to have the opportunity to be able to play here at Lewis and Clark. You just happen to be able to compete in a particular sport uh, and so forth. So loss of identity is a really huge, important piece to transitioning over. Loss of identity. You have people who, a lot of athletes, uh, you guys are familiar with the term depression. <laughs> a lot of depression happens for athletes once it's over because they don't get to sit like you guys do in the nucleus. Once your career is over, this game, it's going to be there, but your tribe is not going to be with you every day. Your structure is not going to be there. Right now, you know what, where to be, what time to be there, what to bring, what to eat, what to lift. Once you step out of the, out of the, out of the game, the career is over. You don't have that structure anymore. You've got to create it for yourself. And if you don't have the practice and the skills to go out there and create that for yourself, you're going to put yourself in a really challenging spot. So I'm going to share with you a bit about my transition, some of the struggles I went through, but I want to share with you what I, what I do in my work now is, in addition to working with teams and coaches and programs and infusing these concepts into the culture and philosophy of their teams and their sports, I also work with former athletes who have struggled with the transition. It is real. I showed up, competed, won a gold medal, got to stand on the stage, got the national anthem. It was like the real deal for old people. <laughs> But it didn't pay the bills. But I felt like me again. I was back running, you know, participating, competing. See, flag football wasn't doing it for me in rec or co-ed basketball or something. It just wasn't doing it. I needed something to just challenge myself and my body. And I found it. But it didn't do me a whole lot of good in the grand scheme of things other than reminding me who I was. So guys, a couple key elements for self-awareness that I wish I was taught prior to me ending my career. A couple things. Through self-awareness is giving to understand you so that you're not swayed by the waves of the, you know, society. That you're going to go the direction you want to go. So a couple things that help you build your level of self-awareness. Number one, look around and listen. Listen to what people are telling you about you. What do people come to you to ask you questions about? To what, maybe you know about gaming. Maybe you know how to you know, really spin a football. Maybe you know about music, jazz, dance, whatever it is. Study. No one came to ask me health uh, on their own. Uh, but they came to ask me about health, and nutrition, and fitness, things that I was passionate about. People saw me executing that in the world, and they wanted to know more about it. Listen to what people are asking you for help for. By doing that, the, the marketplace is telling you something about you. That's something you intrinsically do well. 